So last time we finished off uh, the work on method of moments um, and as I mentioned it's not necessarily the best approach if you want to know how good your fit is and, and certainly if you if you want to be using uh, a Gaussian copulas it, it can be um, less than ideal. So what we're going to look at now is an alternative approach which is using maximum likelihood estimation. So the rationale behind maximum likelihood estimation is that um, what you're trying to do is see whether the parameters you've got are the ones which give you the most likely outcome for the observations that you've seen. And you can use it as a check, but also you can use it as a way of actually deriving these parameters. Um, and it's quite handy because um, uh, when you are using it as a check, there are some tests which are ready-made for using the output of maximum likelihood estimation, or rather at least using a likelihood function to work out um, whether you've got a good fit. So things like a likelihood ratio test, the um, uh, Akaiki information criterion, the Bayesian information criterion, these are all ways of seeing how good the fit you've got is. Now, one of the things about it is it is a trial and error, so it does rely on a range of copulas uh, that you're using being relatively small and, and also having copulas that are amenable to maximum likelihood estimation because some of them uh, really are not. So again for maximum likelihood estimation, a bit like method of moments, using MLE for a statistical distribution is probably going to be more familiar. Um, and the starting point with a probability distribution is going to be the probability density function. Um, and that tells you um, essentially where, uh, how, how likely observations are to be at a particular point in that distribution. And then the point of maximum likelihood estimation is to tweak the parameters such that the parameters you find are the ones which are, mean that your observations are the most likely to have been observed in practice. So you get your probability density function and uh, you put in the information that you've got, you multiply all those likelihoods together and then you find the parameters that maximize this product. Um, in practice you also use logarithms, so when you're multiplying everything together you get something which is a really big product which can be complicated to maximize. If you take the logarithm though it turns this product into a long sum and that means that doing the differential calculus that you need to do to find the maximum is much easier and because um, this likelihood is always going to be positive, you can always apply a log, and because a log is what's known as a monotonic transformation, what that means is that if you find the maximum for the log function, you've also found the maximum for the function itself. So let's look at an example of MLE on a um, statistical distribution. So assume you've got some observations that follow an exponential distribution. And the observations are 3, 10, 5, 6, and 16, and you want to fit them to the exponential distribution. So you want to find out what the parameter for this distribution is. Now the probability density function is what we've got here. f of x is equal to 1 over beta times uh, the exponential, or e to the minus x over beta. So what you need to do is, you need to first generate your likelihood function, which is the product of f of x for each of those observations. So you plug those um, five numbers in for x, and you get this product here, 1 over beta e to the minus 3 over beta times 1 over beta e to the minus 10 over beta, and so on. And that gives you, in the end, 1 over beta to the 5 uh, e to the minus 40 over beta. Now, as I say, if you take logs, it gets much easier. So the log of that likelihood function becomes minus 5 log beta minus 40 over beta. Um, you can then differentiate that with respect to beta, set the result equal to 0, and you can rearrange that equation to show that beta is equal to 8. So if beta is equal to 8, that gives you the um, most likely uh, value for a parameter, which would fit with those observations that you had. So, Emily for copulas. There are a few challenges. Um, because what you do, you're parameterizing a copula which 
might only be part of what you're trying to deal with. Because ideally, you, you don't want to just find the parameters of the copula. You want to find the parameters that fit all of the raw data, which is the copula and the marginal distributions. And, and really, you should be trying to fit or do your maximum likelihood estimation on, on the whole lot, giving a combined likelihood. But that probably involves an awful lot of parameters. So it can be uh, a little complex if, if you decide you want to do that. Now, one approach to trying to make it a bit easier is to use something called uh, inference functions for margins, or the IFM method. Now, what this means is, and then this is a, uh, often what is done in practice if you've got a separate copula, is first you fit your marginal distributions, and then you take those parameters as fixed, and when you're using MLE for the whole distribution, you um, essentially assume that you've already got the parameters for the marginal distribution, so you're only dealing with the copula. The second approach is an approach which works if you are truly only looking at the copula. So you, you do essentially ignore the marginal distributions because you are using um, just a copula and the inputs become the distribution functions for those marginal distributions. And that approach is called canonical maximum likelihood or CML estimation. And for this, you're fitting the copula with the distribution functions as inputs. So, so you're removing that direct link to the underlying data. And often these two approaches will give you exactly the same results. But um, strictly speaking, they are slightly different. And in practice, they're going to be different if there is some link between the copula you're using and the marginal distributions. So, if you are using um, CMLE, Canonical Maximum Likelihood Estimation, the first thing you need to do is you need to standardise your marginal distributions. Um, and you do this by uh, defining the distribution function, which is the probability that um, some value of xt is less than a, a given value, using this formula here um, with an indicator function. But essentially what you're doing is you are um, looking at where your observations are and dividing them between the number of observations plus one. So your distribution function will never be um, zero, uh, it'll never reach one. So for um, the first variable x, if you look at those ranks there, which go from one to ten, you end up with an f of x, which doesn't go from point one to one, which it would if you just divided those ranks by ten, but because you're dividing by eleven, which goes one bigger, you get, uh, get um, a value for the distribution function which is goes from 0 0.091 up to 0 0.909. And we'll call this input u when we're actually dealing with the, co the copula, just so that it um, doesn't look quite so scary as it otherwise would. And for y, you do the same thing. Clearly the ranks are in a slightly different order there, because otherwise you'd have perfect correlation. But still, you've got numbers ranging from 0 0.091 to 0.909. So this essentially means that we can come up with the copula um, density function, or at least the inputs for the copula density function. So for the first one, it would be um, a C of 0 0.09 and 0.182. For the second, 0 0.0182 and 0 0.091, and, and so on and so forth. And your likelihood function is going to be the product of the copula functions with those values of u and v put in. And then you need to maximise that. So for a Gaussian copula, what you're going to do is you're going to substitute u and v into the copula density function. And the Gaussian copula is uh, it's straightforward, but it's kind of straightforward because the Gaussian density function um, has... Uh, at least it starts with a density function rather than a distribution function. So it's not overly complicated. And if you look at the second line of this equation, all that's basically saying is you're taking those inputs, you're normalising them, so phi minus 1, and then you're plugging them into um, that formula for which you've calculated some value of rho using the approach described earlier. For Archimedean copulas, 
you can use the same approach, but this does rely on there being a copular density function, um, which is derived from the distribution function by calculus. Now these exist, but they are often uh, complicated, and uh, even though they're complicated, you'd have to um, differentiate them again in, in the log likelihood function. Now, when I say they're complicated, I mean, this is kind of what they look like. So your distribution function in that second column, you know, even then, for anything apart from the Clayton, it's a bit of a handful. I mean, the Frank distribution function is, is not particularly pretty. But you get the Gumbel density function. I mean, anything which runs over three lines as an equation is not going to be the easiest thing to work with. So you, you, can, you can do it, but um, kind of good luck with that. And then you'll notice the density function of the Gumbel actually starts off with multiply all this by the distribution function as well. So, you know, they, they exist, um, but it's, it's not going to be particularly easy. But the nice thing about using uh, the likelihood function is that you do actually get parameter values which you can substitute back into your log likelihood function and use this for goodness of fit. So you've got things like the likelihood ratio test, which is um, calculated as minus 2 uh, the log of likelihood 1 over likelihood 2, and that's got chi-squared distribution with n2 minus n1 degrees of freedom. So that's the number of parameters in each of the variables you're looking at. So if you're looking at, say, a t copula and you're trying to see whether it's better than Gaussian, this would be a way of doing it because it's saying if you add additional parameters, do you get something which is substantially better? Um, you've got the IKK information criterion, the AIC. This is calculated by 2 times the number of cells minus 2 times the log likelihood function. So a lower number of that is better. And then a similar one is the Bayesian information criterion, which is N log T minus 2 log L, where, where T is the number of um, variables that you're using. So uh, again, if you've got uh, a T versus a Gaussian copula, so you've got different numbers of variables that you're using, um, essentially degrees of freedom, then this can help you better compare those two models. Now I'm going to leave things there before I do one uh, final shorter presentation just to tie everything up. Hopefully this has been useful. Again, if you want to leave any comments or queries uh, on the video, please do. And uh, don't forget to uh, like and share and subscribe and, and all that good stuff.